So you stay in the closet. Girl, where you get that from? I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've watched this movie. I would consider Holiday Heart to be a hood classic, as well as a BET classic since they played this as much as they played Baby Boy. And speaking of Baby Boy, imagine watching Ving Grames play Melvin and then a few months later see him as Holiday. I'm not gonna lie, I was thrown completely off. But when I say Ving put his foot in this role, understand that he did that period but as always while watching this movie i noticed some things and you know it's time to talk about it so let's get into it the movie opens up to us seeing our main character holiday who is feeling the spirit as he plays the piano and sings in church we also see him performing at a lgbtq plus bar where clearly he is the headliner and has earned that spot Collecting all those good SSI chicks, baby. Listen, let's note right here, right now, that Ving Rhames went from playing Melvin, a reformed thug, if you will, to playing this character. And he put his foot in it too. We don't give him enough credit. We then see him go home and there's some sadness there as he reminisces about when he and his partner first bought the place. His late partner, Fisher, had bought this home for them as a surprise, and it was a great day that day. Between me and you, we just got ourselves a big ass place, baby. You better carry me over the threshold. Ow! We also get a flashback of Holiday speaking at his partner's funeral. Apparently, Holiday and their relationship was a secret, and this was the first time his truth was made public. The church, nor his partner's family, saw it for Holiday, and their reaction confirmed some things for him. But judging from the temperature drop at my entrance, baby, you did right by keeping me in the corner crack of your closet. They proceeded to throw Holiday out of the funeral, which in turn crushed him. We then jump back to present day. We see him practicing French for his future trip to Paris. He goes to the travel agency to set up his trip and sadly, this trip, which was meant for him and Fisher, will now be a solo trip. But lucky for him, the travel agent gives him some things to look forward to. If you're looking, Paris is the place. Race, who you fuck, it doesn't matter. I don't think he was asking for all that tea. And in front of everybody child but later on as holiday is getting ready for another night at the club his friend blue calls him requesting a ride and also asking him to not pick him up in his hoopty now i know we're not taking that broke down car you but yes i'm time. taking my car and it's not going to break down okay right. bye fool Don't you up on me, and i guess blue jinxed him because baby the hoopty didn't make it and now they're on the street looking like this now look at us just stuck out here in the middle of nowhere God, you like a sissy with his legs stuck in mid-air. Ready, but nothing tight. While Holiday and Blue continue to go at it, they see a young girl come running to the street yelling and asking for someone to save her mom. She walks straight up to Holiday and he walks with her to help while Blue tries to be the voice of reason. Get back over here, girl. She might have a news. As Blue makes a run for it, Holiday goes up to her apartment and helps stop this guy from beating the girl's mom. This is where we officially meet our other main characters, Wanda and Nikki. Listen, Holiday wasted no time setting shit straight. Get your hands off me. Now, come on. Yeah, throw another punch. I want the Undertaker to earn his feet because he's going to be picking up pieces of your ass all over this damn book. Wanda's boyfriend ends up tearing up her book that she had been working on out of spite and tells them to get out. Holiday suggests that they come home with him, and it turns out that Holiday has a vacant apartment in his duplex and offers Wanda and Nikki a place to stay for a month until he leaves for Paris. Baby Nikki was so excited about it too, since this was the first time she would have her own room. She didn't even care that it was empty. Mama, I got my own bedroom! My own bedroom! But baby, there ain't even a bed in there. So I know. I just make me a pallet on the floor. That's what I usually do. It was then that Holiday knew that this was a special case. And why did Blue call Holiday to check up on him after the fact? Just left him to die. A mess. Anyway, we go back to Wanda and Nikki. Nikki asks her mom if they're gonna go back to her boyfriend. 
Wanda makes a promise to Nikki that they won't be going back and she's done with the drugs. We see if she keeps that promise as the film progresses, but looking at Nikki's expression pretty much gives that answer away. She's heard it all before. So the next day, while Holiday offered Nikki some breakfast, Nikki lays it all out on the line. You need to better stay here. See, my mother needs to stay away from men for a while. See, men are her weakness. First of all, hearing her talk like this, it's very evident that this child has been forced to be her own parent. She's very aware. I fully understand why Holiday took to her and Wanda. Nikki was such a smart kid for her age. But Nikki pledges to help Holiday if he lets them stay. I bet she didn't expect for him to cash in on their promise so soon. You ever fix a toilet? Anyway, Holiday gets Nikki a mattress for her room and brings her back to the house where her mother is upset because she had been looking for her. But it's funny how she missed the note that was left for her, I guess. <laughs> but she completely dismisses Nikki, totally ignoring how excited Nikki was about spending time with Holiday. You would think she would be happy that Nikki experienced some kind of joy, no matter how small, but child, Wanda found out pretty quick that Holiday is not the one nor the two. Just so you know, I don't do fads. Oh, good. And just so you know, I don't do no-count evil bitches who sleep all day instead of taking care of their damn children, okay? Holiday had to go sing some hymns to calm down. So later on, Nikki and Wanda come by to offer their thanks and for Wanda to offer a peace offering. Holiday didn't want any part of the meal that Wanda was offering, so he suggests that he does the cooking from now on. But he was curious about one thing. What is it anyway? I don't know. Now, how in the hell are you trying to feed me something and you don't even know what it is? Wanda girl. Ciao. Anyway, Holiday convinces Wanda to go to church and you already know she wasn't with it. He also put in a word with another member of the church to get Wanda a job. Though, she barely got it due to her going off at the mouth. Lady, I do not have a minute. I just gave you 20. In my opinion, you got a nice little shop here, but you'd sell a lot more stuff if you liven it up. Nikki also participated in choir, but unlike her mama, she really enjoyed it. And listen, for this movie to hype up how Wanda wants to be a writer, I expected way more than this. They used to be young and firm, quick to part and slow to learn. Listen. <laughs> But we get another montage time of them celebrating Holiday's birthday and taking Nikki to her new school and threatening the principal. Now I'm delivering her to you as a happy straight A student with an imagination. And I expect you to return her to me the same way. Otherwise I can be a nightmare bitch. We even see Nikki's new room. Wanda and Holiday work so hard to bring her room to life and I would have loved their room at Nikki's age. I would have never came out. But it's clear that Holiday, Wanda, and Nikki have become a family. But as we've come to know, when things are this good, a turn is around the corner. So we go to Wanda writing this book and it's a struggle for her. She's so frazzled that she goes lurking in her purse and finds remnants of her favorite drug and she relapses. We then go to Nikki and Wanda doing a fun little ritual. When it's time to make a wish, Nikki doesn't make one since she feels that life is so good for them right now. But then we get Wanda's wish. I wish, I, I wish that I could stop wishing. I think this was the beginning of Wanda losing hope and therefore going back to bad habits. We fast forward to Wanda, Nikki, and Holiday helping out at the church. As Wanda goes to dump some trash, she runs into her old boyfriend, the one that Holiday beat up earlier in the film. And of course, he tests her sobriety, or what's left of it. She damn near takes the bait, but then... Nikki! What's happening? Nikki looks so disappointed and over it. I think this was the beginning of Nikki starting to lose faith in her mom or really taking in the fact that things weren't as perfect as they seemed. Now, I'm not sure if they told Holiday, but he knew something was up by the dark vibes at the church. Well, maybe they did, cause Holiday suggests that he stay and not go to Paris so that he can look after them. Holiday was so selfless, such a good soul. 
But then Holiday unknowingly leads Wanda to meeting her new beau. When he brings Wanda to the club to see him perform, she meets Silas, a known dealer and the owner of that same club. Now, Silas wasn't as messy as her last boyfriend, but baby Holiday wanted nothing to do with him. Later on, while Holiday and Wanda are laying down, Wanda brings up how if anything happens to her, she wants Holiday to take care of Nikki. And this was so funny to me. If anything ever happens to me, will you look after Nikki? Girl, just because I wrap my legs around you don't mean you're going to die. Damn. Wanda knew that the odds weren't in her favor at this point, so she had to make sure Nikki was taken care of. But sometime after, Holiday and Nikki are at the store getting food. Nikki entered herself into a talent contest and Holiday is motivating her per usual. But baby, when they make it home, Wanda comes to the door all flustered. Turns out she had company over. Mr. Silas has officially entered the household and Holiday was not pleased. And Nikki was over it because as history has shown, it was only a matter of time before her mother went down the same dark path she's been down too many times before. Maybe he just lives and deals in his limo. So you don't even have to go anywhere to cop. You can just go in his briefcase and grab what you call your little glass dick. Wanda needed this dose of reality. Was it disrespectful? Yes but it was much needed. So sometime later, Silas came to the club to talk to Holiday, and when Holiday wanted no parts of the conversation, Silas didn't take too kindly to that. Man, don't ever pull away from me when I'm talking to you, you understand? But why did he have to pull a gun out on him though? But basically, Silas demands that Holiday stay away from Nikki and Wanda since he's the pappy now. Man, I just gotta start taking my fatherly duty seriously because I can't have my little girl being influenced by a man who wears a dress. Do you even know her middle name yet? If she's allergic to anything, but she's your daughter. Yeah, okay. So by the time Holiday comes home, Nikki is waiting for him since she was told that she couldn't see him anymore and she was not losing her Holiday. My question is, how long did it take for Wanda to notice Nikki wasn't even there? She was so careless. That, that really bothered me. But Wanda talks to Holiday, telling him they've grown too dependent on him and how she wants her shot at a real family with another drug dealer, no less. But she failed to realize she already had that with Holiday. It didn't look like how she wanted it to look, but that's what it was. This is also where we learn Holiday's tragic backstory. So Holiday, at 16 years old, was sent to jail for killing the man that beat his mom the same mom that begged for him to be sent to jail where he was assaulted by 20 men. Learning this, it was crazy how Holiday even considered helping Nikki that night. Most people with that kind of trauma would have ran the other way. But to conclude their conversation and get his point across, he says this to Wanda. And that child in there loves me. And I thought you loved me, Wanda. I thought you loved me. And this argument gets worse when Holiday takes it a step further after Wanda suggests that Silas's heart is as big as Holiday's. His heart is as big as yours. Oh no, what's bigger is his pocketbook. Or is it his dick? I just don't know which one, the one in his pants or the one in his briefcase. I got emotional watching this scene. Where is an Oscar where you need one child? Cause Ving Rhames left no crumbs, not one. And then this took it one step further. Fuck you! You and your damn child already did that. I know he felt bad after that. Nikki was his baby. Anyway, Nikki wins the talent contest. Holiday watches her from the back of the building, not making his presence known. He does greet her when she makes it home, acting like he never saw her at the talent show, and offers her a gift to match the other gift that she didn't care to wear. I think Nikki was still pissed at what he said, or they may have hid his gifts from her. I'm not sure. Well, Wanda and Holiday catch up. He learns that Wanda no longer works where she used to. Then Wanda feeds him excuses about staying home to work on this mystery book child. But the whole time she was talking, Holiday saw straight through the bullshit. Things weren't on the up and up, and it was only a matter of time before it all came crashing down. We then see Holiday planning the Paris trip again and also saying farewell to the club. This switch up was legendary. Listen, Holiday 
ain't the only one on the come up. Blue hit a lick as well with his little farmer. While they're talking about their soon to be new lives, Blue tells Holiday that he saw Wanda using behind his building. And he also warns Holiday about trying to save people that don't want to be saved. As caring as Holiday is, we'll see how that works out for him. But the next day when Holiday pulls up to the house, he overhears Wanda and Silas arguing from the street. He walks right past Nikki and is only able to see a glimpse of what's going on inside Silas and Wanda's apartment before Silas spots him lurking and closes the door. Apparently, Wanda's habit has become more obvious and has caused problems for Silas. Wanda starts stealing here and there from Silas' stash, but now she's stealing way more than Silas can cover. And this leads Silas to reach out to Holiday for some help. And baby Holiday made him work for it too. Come on, man, this ain't easy for me. Now, they need you. Wanda's in trouble. Then call Johnny Cochran. They tell me he's a miracle worker. But when Silas says this, Holiday had to take him seriously. I'm banging on you loving them more than you hate me. Later on that night, Wanda comes knocking on Holiday's door. Wanda is lit, per usual, and Holiday is hesitant about opening the door. I'm trying hard to live my own life instead of being y'all sugar tit all the time. So why don't you just leave me to my own goddamn madness? And I guess Wanda just gave up and left him alone after that because when he opened the door, she was gone. So the next day, Holiday left for Paris, but before he could go to the airport, he goes to visit Fisher's gravesite and gives him flowers. We go back to Wanda and she's out doing what she does best. We go back and forth between Holiday and Wanda. We see Wanda spiraling, calling Nikki in a panic, while we see Holiday hesitating and thinking Paris may not be a good idea. And of course, Holiday doesn't go to Paris. He does exactly what Blue told him not to do, and thank goodness he did because Nikki had been in the house alone for two whole days while Wanda is out doing Wanda. Holiday has Nikki stay with him and he tries talking to her and insists she prays for her mother but Nikki tells him that she doesn't think prayer will work and Holiday decides to take over that task for her so he prays over her and prays for her mother. We see a montage of Nikki getting baptized and Holiday looking for Wanda. We also see Nicole graduate from middle school. At graduation, she reads a poem she wrote titled, Where Do You Find the Blessing? And this poem was filled with pain. I really feel bad for Nikki. She's had to endure so much at such a young and impressionable age. But as she reads her poem, Wanda peers in and watches her. How she got in that building looking like she did? That's so crazy to me. Alfre Woodard played the hell out of this role, but she goes back to the van she came in and takes another hit. She's trying to fight her addiction, but the drugs have fully taken over at this point. We then go to after the graduation, Nikki and Holiday are at a restaurant getting a bite to eat to celebrate Nikki's big day. And child, why did Nikki think that this was the right time to ask these type of questions? Do you really sleep with men? Yes, I sleep with men. I love the conversation they had, how he admitted his truth, but also asked her how she felt, not telling her how she should feel. I also loved his honesty and him conveying that who he was was nothing to be ashamed of or hidden. But listen, these questions. So are you and me gonna march in the gay parade? Oh no, baby. I'm from the old school. I marched with King. And Nikki wasn't done. So you stay in the closet? But this good day could not keep going that way because when Holiday and Nikki got home, they saw Wanda rummaging through the apartment. And again, Nikki is disappointed in her mom because she knows she's no closer to healing and being the mom she knows she can be. When Wanda asks Nikki where were the diamond earrings that Silas gave her, Holiday tries to throw her out, but Nikki, feeling as down as she was, seeing how down bad her mother was, found the earrings and gave them to her. Just take it. Thank you, my daughter, for helping me. At this point, she was like, whatever you want, sis, because you're not going to stop. And then Wanda tries to offer an excuse or a glimpse of hope, but even she knew she was full of it, literally and figuratively. I just got to rectify a few things and then I'm uh, I'll be back. I won't. Okay. But... When Wanda leaves out their apartment, Holiday tries again to convince her to stay and get help in this scene. It was like Holiday knew her days were numbered, and maybe she did too because she reminds him that he has to look out for Nikki. 
So later that night, Nikki tells Holiday about the first thing her mother stole from her. It was a pretty red bike. She described the bike to a T. Wanda stole it when she was sleeping at the shelter. Nikki knew it was her, but didn't call her out on it. She even goes on to say how she used to be the best mom, how they used to go to the library and have picnics, but all that changed when Nikki turned seven and Wanda met her boyfriend that used drugs, who in turn got her hooked on the same drugs. But it's here that Holiday gave Nikki some sound advice. Baby, sometimes leaving is the only way left to show someone how much you really do love them, especially if they can't give you what you need. Sometime after, Silas shows back up out of nowhere with gifts galore for Nikki. It was cute at first, until they started cramping Holiday's space while he was practicing for Sunday service. But Nikki being Nikki, she gets Holiday and Silas to actually have a conversation, which leads to them actually getting to know each other. Though, there was some residual awkwardness. I want you to understand. No, I do. Hey man, what's up? Oh, please. On a good day, Slim, you wouldn't be my type. But Silas tells Holiday how he went to get them a house prepared, but when he came back, he saw that Wanda was too far gone, and now he doesn't know what to do. And this starts the funny part of this movie. Silas and Holiday were a complete mess. Listen, Nikki starts her period, and baby, they were both shocked. I got my period. How? Silas! The girl done become a woman. She got her period. How? They were such men, thinking a period was a result of something and not a natural thing that happens. And then hiding the condoms like she would magically want to have sex. Like, get out of here. <laughs> and their banter loved it. Specifically, when are you going home? Because you're wearing my couch, out. Hey, shut up, man. I know you like having me around there for protection. Protection from who, Negro? And when Holiday suggests that he ride in the back of the limo, Silas was not up to playing driving Miss Daisy. Oh, and by the way, I think I'll sit in the back. I've never been properly chauffeured. <clears throat> man, man, you better get your ass in the car. Oh, no, you didn't. And why did they decide to watch Imitation of Life again? After everything Nikki's been through since seeing it for the first time, she now understands how one could hate their mother. Nikki has officially entered the anger stage. And these feelings don't get better when Silas tells Nikki that he has to leave for a week or two. And Nikki is so over people coming in and out of her life. She's tired of all the lies at this point, but she suggests that she rides with him. And why he agreed to this, I don't know. This was careless and stupid. Nikki ends up getting out of the car and walks the streets trying to find her mom. Now this was careless on her part cause why did you even get out the car? She ends up walking into the night, Silas starts freaking out and tells Holiday and they start arguing like an old married couple. Eventually Nikki finds her mom inside a random building and Wanda looks bad real bad and if things couldn't get any worse ricky a local dealer and pimp comes up to question why wanda isn't doing her job and wanda is so desperate for a hit that she offers up nikki nikki that he, he just want to kiss you you big girl after she did that that would have been it for me whatever happened to her would have just happened to her because she's way too far gone at this point she's a danger to everyone close to her after all this, Silas tells Holiday that maybe it's best if he leaves Nikki with Holiday since he doesn't want to be another disappointment to her. While Holiday insists that he stays and how he and Nikki need him, he still opts to leave. This change prompts Holiday to buy another place so that he and Nikki can have a fresh start. And one night while packing, Holiday notices how late it is and goes looking for Nikki. And he didn't even have to look far because Nikki was getting grown in her and her mom's old apartment. And you already know Holiday went clean off. But when Nikki says this, Holiday sits her straight. I'm home slaving, trying to fucking pack up my life to give you a better life. But I didn't ask you for a better life. Holiday immediately regretted his actions, but it took him a minute to realize that two people, not just one, did something wrong and he demands an apology from Nikki and gets it. I'm the one owed an apology, and unless I get one right now, you gonna really see me act the queenly fool and it won't be nothing pretty. I'm sorry, Holiday. Sometime later, Holiday surprised Nikki with a much needed message. I want you to be able to look in the mirror and see Nikki. 
not your mother, not your circumstances. And every day it's your job to tell that person staring at you that you love her. And Nikki had a surprising response. This was the first time that Nikki was able to let out her anger and sadness. She had been holding it in for a minute, and though unexpected, it was good that she finally let it out. So now it's Christmas time and Holiday is planning to give Nikki a pretty red bike like the one that her mom stole from her. But getting this bike was proven to be quite a hassle. Don't have your bike. No, now you really need to arrest that attitude, go back in the warehouse and get my damn bike. By the time I get there, I'm gonna raise all kind of holy hell. Don't need your business. Oh, you really trying to block my salvation, aren't you? And child, Wanda surprises Holiday at the bar. She tells Holiday about the time she stole Nikki's bike. She's high out of her mind, talking the same, I'm gonna get clean this time talk that they've heard so many times before. And Holiday, being Holiday, is there with open arms. And just when you think that Wanda is going to go home with Holiday and get better or try to for the umpteenth time, child, she goes outside with a bike and gets spotted by Ricky. He takes the bike from her, prompting Holiday to come and whoop some ass. So while they're fighting, Holiday realizes that things might go too far and he tells Wanda to get the bike so that they can get out of there. Let's get the bike! Wanda, come on! Ah. Wanda, ah. But they weren't quick enough, and Wanda gets got. We then see Nikki at her mother's gravesite with Holiday and Silas. Silas has come back to care for Nikki and Holiday. I love them together. Nikki will definitely have a dope life with those two. Trust. But eventually, Holiday goes to Paris with Nikki, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. I was younger watching this movie. I was at an age where I was aware of how serious addiction was and how it can bring down your life and relationships. I felt bad for Nikki and I loved her and Holiday's bond. But watching this as an adult, I appreciate Holiday and what he did for Wanda and Nikki so much more. He was an amazing character with such a selfless, kind heart. For him to have gone through such a traumatic ex experience at 16 years old, all because he was trying to help his mother, to him willingly putting himself at risk to save two strangers, that's big. A lot of people wouldn't take that risk, but he did. I loved how Holiday was unapologetically himself, never ashamed never tried to shrink. He didn't hide from questions about who he was and how he lived his life. Though he was a total sweetheart and had a protective nature, he wasn't a pushover and was quick to put someone in their place. He always held a space for Wanda, even when she progressively got worse and always encouraged Nikki to leave a space for her as well. It sucks that Nikki never got to see her mother be her addiction or finish that book, but what she got in her place, Silas and Holiday, Together, I think she'll be fine. I feel for her first boyfriend though. <laughs> As for Silas, though he was a drug dealer, Wanda was kind of right when she said that Silas had the same kind of heart as Holiday. He genuinely cared for Nikki and Wanda and wanted the best for them, but honestly, a dealer and a former addict had no business being with each other. I liked how he was able to see past Holiday being a gay man and really get to know him. And I liked how Holiday was able to see past him being a dealer and his past disrespectful acts and get to know him as well. I believe they both understood at the end that they both loved Wanda and Nikki and wanted the best for them and they weren't the enemy. Editing nostalgia here. How about I almost forgot about Wanda? Where they do that at? <laughs> but anyway, before getting to Wanda, my last note about Silas and something I forgot to mention was that it was pretty questionable how he was homophobic at first, I guess but on the LGBTQ plus bar. He wasn't bothered enough to make money off of them though. No. But was he the first to do this? No, and certainly not the last. But as for Wanda, there's no doubt in my mind that Wanda wanted to be a good mother to Nikki. You can see how disappointed she was in herself when she relapsed and when she had to keep making promises to Nikki that she knew she couldn't possibly keep. After a certain point, like when she was rummaging through their old apartment, she started to make another promise and she just gave up and stopped mid-sentence. She always made sure to tell Holiday to look after Nikki for her cause she knew the worst case scenario and she also knew that Holiday loved Nikki just as much as she did. 
I believe she was appreciative of Holiday and really wanted to be her habit, but in the end, her habit won. I believe Wanda's habit for men came from her wanting to have a family for Nikki, so she attached to men who weren't always good for her. Though Silas turned out to be a good guy, they really didn't make a good match with her being a former addict at that time. Wanda was sick at the end of the day, so I had nothing but empathy for her character even when she made careless decisions. As for Nikki, it was heartbreaking to see her hope for the best and constantly get the worst possible outcome. All she knew for the chunk of her life was her mom being on drugs, getting with horrible men, and her, Nikki, having to clean up her messes. That had to have been a hard life. And I don't blame Nikki for eventually becoming resentful and getting into a little bit of trouble because a child in her position has to think, why am I not enough for you to wanna be and stay clean? But I guess everything happens for a reason because Holiday and Silas were able to give her what her mother wanted her to have but couldn't give her herself. After all these years, I think I love this movie even more now. But anyway, that's it y'all. Thanks for watching this review. It will be available on Spotify per usual. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. There won't be a new video next week but no worries. I'll be back with a hint in no time. Bye.